Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Good to talk to all of you again today. And finally, 20 days after the CC Exodus began, Wargaming have released what is uh, their most detailed statement yet. Uh, so before we get into the statement, uh, big shout outs to all the CCs who did join the Exodus and, uh, you know, taken a stand. Uh, you know, they stood up for their morals, stood up for what they believed in and leaving the CC program. So, you know, big shout out to all of you. Um, if you guys want to check out their channels, all of the links to the channels, uh, at least the ones that I do have, are going to be in the video description below. I might even put it in a pinned comment or something just so it's easier for you guys to find. All right. so. Moving into the actual World of Warships statement. Um, all right, so first of all, let's see. They start off with... Um, actually, you know what? Before we start looking at the statement, let's see who it's from first, because that's important. Okay, so it's coming from Viktor Bodovsky, which is the publishing director, and Andre Lisak, which is the development director. So the publishing director is going to be responsible for the overarching, I guess, picture of the game. And the development director is going to be sort of like the gameplay and the overall... Uh, design of how the game is going to be um it's important to know i think it's reached the level of the directors it's no longer at just the producer level it's actually gone uh to that particular level um although let's take a look at actually the publishing director let's see about how much power he actually has because it matters um i was honestly hoping to see people from even higher up in the chain uh, come out with this message. But let's see uh, how much power this guy actually has within the company so we can have a sense of how much this stuff that they're promising uh, really, you know, is going to have any kind of action being done for it. Okay, so here's uh, Victor Bardowski. Uh He works uh, as the publishing director for Wargaming. And so he's the publishing product director, okay? So he's Worked there for a total of six years, but in the current position, he's been there for four years, nine months. Um, interesting that he's listed as being in Minsk, and then on top, he's listed as being in Moscow, even though World of Warships is in St. Petersburg. I wonder if this is partially that level of disconnect as well. Um, I'm not really sure. It's hard to say. <laughs> Anyways, so he's leading all publishing operations for World of Warships worldwide. Okay, so he's responsible for basically every region. Okay, so... He's relatively high up in the company. He's the keeper of publishing, uh, so basically everything pro uh, profit and loss, and he's responsible for any publishing aspects, okay? So he's got full control over the publishing budget and strategy. Okay, so he controls some of the purse strings here. Uh, final approval on strategic and tactical decisions which affect execution product publishing strategy. Okay, accountability for product key performance indicators or KPIs. Creation and setting KPIs for product publishing team. Okay, so he's setting like the goals and things like that. Leading the WOWS global team. 13 direct, 60 plus indirect reports, including regional product directors with full-scale publishing teams in EU and ACIS, APAC. Okay, so that includes community customer support, content, and monetization. Product marketing director, leader of global marketing operations. Okay, so on and so forth. So he's supposed to be leading everything related to World of Warships. At least that's what I'm getting from all of this. And he's a person who manages budget. Okay, so I guess for him to come out as... Um, it is somewhat substantial. Okay, so th this is definitely more so than just, uh, you know, a, like an executive producer or something like that, you know, who's probably a couple steps below this guy. And, okay, so he's tracking uh, all product business and performance-related BI data. Okay, so he's tracking the data and things like that. So possibly there's a feeling here, at least from what I'm reading here, that he might be the guy who's been looking at a lot of the quarterly reports and stuff like that, looking at the metrics and going, yeah, things look absolutely great. And, um, you know, and then now this whole thing exploded and now he's like, oh, whoa, what, what's actually going on? And maybe this is where um, the statement's coming from, right? Like somebody who's actually on top high enough to, to see it and not be too thrilled by it. So, all right. So now that we know who is who the messaging is coming from, uh, let's go back and take a look at the statement. All right, so let's go into the actual message. Okay, so dear players, lately, a lot of you have been upset with various incidents, our decisions, as well as a general state of things in the game and community. Before we continue, I want to apologize to all of you, players, content creators, moderators, testers, and other volunteers, to those who support us and those disappointed with us. Oh, okay, so that's an apology. At least that's something. Everything that happens within the game and the community is our responsibility, and we are sorry that we let the situation come to its current state. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
We want to take this opportunity to be more transparent about how we will take actions to improve our internal processes and our relationship with you. It will be a long read. You will see items of different scales and with different times required to see results. No doubt more news and announcements will follow. So please don't treat this as a final plan and the ultimate solution to everything. Okay, so this is what they are coming out with after 20 days as their preliminary plan. Okay. Instead, please treat it as a list of things we're currently working on and a way to show our intentions to make the game and community a better place. Also, please know that it is not comprehensive as many other measures are revolving around internal processes. Okay, so I guess it is also important to point out, right, that if Wargaming had a lot of goodwill with the player base, a message like this is received with a lot more sort of optimism and faith. Obviously, in the current environment, uh, this message comes out and I think a lot of people, myself included, are looking at this with the, okay, we'll wait and see at most kind of thing. Maybe even a bit of distrust in there because they have failed so many times, right? So for me, that's the first little thing. It's like, okay, yeah, they're they're coming out with a statement. But, you know, a lot of things that they're saying about actually like fixing stuff, I'm entirely in the wait and see camp. This statement alone probably isn't going to be good enough for me. Um, but okay, let's, let's take a look at the first big thing that I want to address. And that is... Monetization. Okay, so they are trying to address one of the biggest things, right? The thing that I believe is one of the primary causes and reasons for most of the CCs uh, exiting the program this time around, which is monetization. Okay, so World of Warships is a free-to-play title following the games as a service concept with substantial monthly updates and a constant evolutionary cycle. To support this model, we rely on a multitude of monetization tactics considered to be standard practice in the industry. <laughs> excessive loot boxes is standard practice okay um while we believe it is unreasonable to expect us to discuss our monetization strategies in all but the most general terms this is business critical information we do understand that there are specific details that are cause for concern oh sorry cause of concern for some of you we will address them as best as we can below okay random mechanics as a business we always follow laws and comply with new regulations as they appear Huh. We always follow laws. So Santa create shortlist, you know, false advertising with the summer tokens. Hmm. Thonk about that one. Yeah, press X to doubt. <laughs> Therefore, our position on containers and random bundles is always consistent with government's decisions on this matter and will keep being so. Okay, that doesn't really sound like they're wanting to change too much there. In some cases, we will even try to work ahead of industry practices. We are aware that there are slowly progressing trends to regulate the digital space more and more, to catch up with technical solutions and business models built on them. With that in mind, we appreciate your feedback and commit to the following. Oh, they are making a commitment to something now. Okay, from now on, for all new ships, if they are distributed via containers or random bundles which are basically the only ways that all new ships are coming out these days, basically, um, there will be an alternative way to obtain them. Methods may vary and may include time gating, i.e. early access or time delayed offers, direct purchases, completing in-game activities, etc. Okay, so the containers aren't going away. We're just going to have other ways of um, letting you get them, mostly things that will be delayed gratification, right? So, you know, really, again, working on sort of human psychology and behavioral psychology here um, to get people to maybe find the containers more attractive. It's kind of like the way that Missouri is, right? Like, think about the whole, okay, in order to get Missouri, you got to do this whole campaign where you've got to log in every so often, like, you know, within every like two days to complete these missions or whatever. And then at the end, you got to go through some poor ticket and everything. Okay, so they're not really changing stuff. They're just going to make it so that there, yes, there is going to be an alternative, but most of the stuff is still going to be in crates and containers. Okay, not super optimistic about that. Um, we'll see, we'll see. Um, and, and I'll get to a little thing at the end of this paragraph to tell you why I think that way. Drop rates uh, says, okay, we plan to publish all dro drop rates for all containers and random bundles and are already working on it. It'll take some time, but our hard commitment is it'll happen over the course of the of next year. So it'll take them a year, over a year, to put drop rates in. Okay. Um, I did read their other statement saying how there is some regulations for different countries and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> I wonder if it's because they really now have to um, adjust these drop rates so that they will be uh, somewhat acceptable to the regulators. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Um, okay. We'll see how that one goes. But... 
it's kind of disappointing that, you know, the things that they already have the numbers for and the chances for, they're not just straight up putting in. That's kind of a, again, a bit of a question mark. Not really sure what the holdup there is. Uh, their excuse about China is kind of a weird one because China essentially operates in a completely separate market where the company in China is like a partner company and it's completely different from the other server regions. So I'm not sure why China was the excuse for holding off on giving all the other regions drop rate chances. It's just kind of a weird question mark there. Okay, Return of the Missouri. The initial concept of the event was perceived negatively. Well, no kidding. And we should have known better. Yeah, you should have considering all the feedback that was given. The case was a learned lesson for us and we added an alternative way to purchase the ship. Yes, a very convoluted way. We got that. We're also addressing the situation with the ship's earnings to make sure that those who owned Missouri before 0.10.7 will on average receive not less credits than before the changes to the ship's economics. We're grateful for the battles you played. These helped us collect sufficient data. The amount of data allowed us to add a 10% bonus to the special Missouri combat mission from 20 to 30%. Additionally, we will issue appropriate amount of credits to all the affected players as a sign of appreciation. Details will be published in the dev blog separately. Okay, so the credit earning part of the Missouri, here's the part I don't understand about Wargaming, right? You had a ship, an old version of the ship, um, and now you're giving this like mission where you got to collect data, which is kind of weird because you guys basically programmed the ship in the first place, right? And you're adding these missions in and, and all that. And this mission, by the way, is an additive mission. It's not even multiplicative. So it doesn't even uh, work on all the flags that you put on, which is really where the big difference in credit earnings is coming from. It's you used to be able to stack the Missouri bonuses with all of the flags, which was a huge bonus. This one is just purely additive. I mean, why go through such a convoluted process when you guys could have just entirely made like a, I don't know, Missouri veteran camo, like, you know, from the original camo and then just simply added in the, you know, bonus that you were taking away. I, I just don't understand why you have to go through such a convoluted, messy way of doing the credit thing. Like, this is really bizarre. Anyways, summer sale. Unfortunately, we made a translation mistake in a sensitive description. We fixed it ASAP. And to protect you from such mistakes in the future, we'll add additional checks and approvals to our internal processes. If anything like that happens again, if anything like that happens again, <laughs> we will offer refunds to all of the affected players. Now, of course, they're humans, so okay, mistakes can happen. I'll give them that. We did it before, and we'll do it again to make sure that you are compensated. We will also pay more attention to the positioning of such events. For example, many of you stated the term sale suggests direct discounts on in-game items. Oh, yeah, remember the whole... Summer token sale, 95% off on a thing that we've never sold before. Yeah, we all remember this, right? Okay, and finally, the whole age rating thing, they're going to go ahead and uh, change the way their ratings are. Okay, um, now, going back earlier, the whole random mechanics thing, and a lot of the stuff here, it's purposely a little vague, if you actually notice. If you like really read into it, you notice that they're a little bit vague. Now, the reason... I say this is a little vague. And the reason why I have a lot of sort of doubt towards this has to do with the way that Wargaming has behaved in the past. Now, this happens to be a bit of history that I'm not sure all of you are aware of, but way back in the day uh, with Graf Zeppelin, the initial release of Graf Zeppelin, um, obviously, for those of you who were around back in the day, you know that I got booted from the CC program for being very, very critical about that ship. Um, and at the end, they opted for this whole player balancing thing, which sounded really nice at the time. They're like, okay, all owners who have a Graf Zeppelin will bring you guys in and you guys can help us balance the ship. And then, of course, people, many people uh, participated. Obviously, there were a lot of people who didn't know what on earth was actually going on in terms of how to balance the ship for the gameplay. So they ended up creating a monstrosity of a vessel, which was really, really ridiculous. Now, you might think that, okay, you know, so they tried and, you know, like, okay, everything worked the way that the players wanted to. But funny thing is, when I've been in conversation with Wargaming in the past, there was a very interesting discussion that came up once about Graf Zeppelin. And what Wargaming said is that, well, you guys see what the Graf Zeppelin is now, right? This was the really broken post player input RTS version, they were like, well, you see the end result, right? It's this broken ship. And then they basically said, well, this is the reason why we can't trust players to, you know, uh, player feedback when it comes to ships. But we can't let players have much of a role in balancing ships because this is the kind of stuff that they come up with. It was a way at the time, at the end, for them to say, well, this is why we must trust our data and not listen to players. 
think about that. You know, you, you have a feeling that at the end, you're just sort of running around in, within sort of Wargaming's defined circle. You never really get to have a real good, I guess, discussion with them. You know, you're always within their boundaries, right? And this feels like the same kind of thing. You know, they, they've already set the boundaries. And everything else that happens is going to be within their control at the end of the day, right? Um, so, yeah, hmm, I don't know. And this vagueness, it's like purposely there. Anyways, all right, let's take a look at feedback. Feedback, okay. One of the main topics we want to address is how your feedback influences the game. Regrettably, it was not always clear how we use certain types of feedback and where it fits into our decision-making process. We've always taken it into account. Press X to doubt more. <laughs> but looking back, we see that in some cases, it was not balanced well enough against other equally important sources of information. You mean the spreadsheet, which overrode most of that feedback straight up, if not all. Large volumes of data and the team's creative vision of the game. Team's creative vision of the game that brought you CV rework, submarines, commander skill rework. Yeah, okay. We want to change the situation and make sure we pay more direct attention to your suggestions and opinions while also giving you more insight into how the decisions are made. Things we are considering and evaluating right now. Pay more direct attention to your suggestions. Hmm. Okay. All right. More reaction to feedback on ship balance. We know there are several ships you want to address and we'd like to confirm balance changes are planned for Zal, Petropavlovsk, Petropavlovsk, and FDR in 10.10. Moving forward, we'll try to increase the promptness of addressing release ships in a similar way and when it is not possible. For example, changing a ship will move it out of interval of normal performance. We will put more effort into giving you insights and explaining our reasoning. Didn't they just tell us that all these ships were fine? Like, not too long ago? Hmm. Okay. Aircraft carriers. Oh boy, CVs. We're going to talk about CVs again. Despite many other things happening in the game, we haven't forgotten that there are still questions to be answered regarding CVs. We've implemented a lot of changes to this class since the rework, but we acknowledge more changes may be needed. After how many years? And on top of that, the initial discussions regarding CVs that I had uh, with Sub Octavian at Corpus Christi at the Let's Battle Tour event where he first pitched the idea. And I'm like, look, if you guys go ahead with the system the way that you have envisioned it right now, you're going to have problems because you guys are essentially going with a binary design and like literally everything predicted has happened <laughs> with CVs. And as you can see, it's still not in a good place. So they know it. Um, CV spotting is a good example. We conducted several tests before and did not find a good adequate way to address it. That does not mean we will not continue to improve it. It's not something that can be done quickly. Please keep that in mind. Yeah, so they've had this whole mess with CVs and, you know, these whole problems that they have with CVs. And you look at the, the design decision for submarines and you see some of the same problems coming up, right? It's like they don't really have that really nuanced creative design. It's just something very binary, very sort of forced in. So not good. Um, all right. Another common question is regarding odd tier carriers, which were previously mentioned as support carriers. Right now, they are in early prototyping stage, developing document concepts. I want to honestly tell you they're not expected in 2022. So basically, we're looking at 2023 and beyond. And they're only at the document stage, yet, right? So yeah, I don't know when we're going to see that. Okay, so that's like a really far in the distance kind of thing. New gameplay experiences. We will keep evolving the game by introducing new game modes and mechanics, both fiction and history based. For example, 10.8 will have a new mode, Convoys, inspired by historical events. Like, this is really the mode they should have been testing submarines at, where they could have actually had, like, somewhat realistic-ish type submarines instead of the crazy monstrosities that make modern SSNs look, you know, at them with jealousy. Um, yeah, so Convoys should have been the mode where that was tested. I don't know why they try to force submarines into, like, ranked and co-op. It's just... Anyways... Like, again, it makes you wonder, right? Like, they t they talk about their team's creative vision of the game, and you just kind of go in, like, that's your creative vision of the game, you know? Hmm. Anyways, um, we will keep exploring new game modes in the future, okay? It's one of our priorities. Okay. Uh, expanding permanent types of battles, primarily random battles with new modes, is also one of the long-term goals to keep the game fresh and entertaining. However, creating a mode suitable not just for a short game period, but for permanent presence with high replayability, high replayability is a much bigger challenge. Okay, so basically they're saying that developing a new mode is very difficult. And I get that. That's that's a fair that's a fair statement there. Um, especially if you want the mode to be popular, because um 
you know, if you've ever seen the data that they showed us uh, regarding operations, you actually see this graph where like randoms were really popular, like it's on the top. Co-op was pretty steady, like kind of down here. And then operations were basically like nothing with the one spike when it came to new operation. And once it was played through, it just dropped down to nothing again. So this makes a lot of sense that they're having issues when it comes to developing a mode, like let's say operations, and then the replayability isn't there, right? Um, convoys you know if they really want to do submarines they're probably looking at it and wondering if you know submarine versus surface ship convoy battles would have that replayability so that is the challenge and i i can i can at least give them that that is not an easy thing to do maps we've slowed down with adding new maps to the game recently because the team focused more on the game's visuals in general okay updated visual effects new water other improvements as well as introducing a whole new level of underwater world that said in 2022 at least one new map will be released Another one has some ch chances to make it in time. So basically, one new map. Spoiler, we're also going to try a new mechanic with first of these new maps not previously used in the game. <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. If you think about that, I mean, it's been how many months? 18 months since the last new map? And the last new map wasn't really all that new. It was really just a rehash of an older map. So... Yeah, we haven't really had a new map in at least two years now. Operations. CV rework rendered a lot of AI-related internal tools obsolete, made working with AI aircraft stuff very difficult and impossible. Right now, we're in the process of removing this obstacle. It's being worked on for many reasons, not just the sake of operations, but one of the benefits we'll have when this project is done is we'll be able to return some of the old operations in 2022. Okay, so this is basically a hard U-turn. They originally said that operations were just not really all that important to them. So, you know, that's obviously something, okay. Um, although interesting to note that the operations, mm, some of the problems with that mode is still going to be there, I think, when, when it comes back. Um, other. There are plenty of other things that we know you're interested in, and quite a lot of them are being worked on in different stages of development. We haven't forgotten about things such as secondary builds for cruisers. Yeah, because you guys needed to rejig the entire you know captain skill rework purely to bump it up to 21 points which wasn't even a linear increase it was a sudden jump at 2021 purely for that right uh to to quote unquote change the meta make more builds viable um mess that up yeah the update of old ship models usdds that they talked about being done to sort of hd quality released in 2020 yeah it's almost getting closer to the end of 2021 now <laughs> tier 4 cv tuning yep again all that feedback about tier 4 cvs being a really bad idea yeah, ignored huron coming 2022 west virginia 44 coming 2023 oh man uh anything with wargaming that happens like two years from now yeah uh i, I would take that with a big grain of salt there addressing the chat system improvements for rank battles and many other small and not so small changes to the game that'll make your experience better with it okay all right <laughs> my optimism is not that high after reading this i didn't say that much communications all right we are a large distributed team of over 500 people working across more than four countries coming from all walks of life culturally varied and hindered severely by the pandemic from traveling to see each other in person to be able to align on certain matters we are bound to have organizational challenges in the realm of communication oh yes all these communication mistakes however these internal challenges should not be visible much less influence the player experience improving communication is a never-ending process which needs to be evolutionary and not revolutionary so you'll see these improvements incrementally over time in many areas rather than a, as a one-time institutional overnight change okay but we want to address a few specific points you pointed out in this area okay Community Contributor Program. When we created our Community Contributor Program, our goal was to help talented folks interested in our game create content and grow their channels. Right now, it's clear that a lot of things in the program do not work as they should. Yeah, no kidding. Which leads to frustration and failed expectations, even though some other parts are running well. We will update the program, both in terms of rules. <laughs> both in terms of rules. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> Uh, for those remaining CCs, oh boy, this is going to be fun. New rules. <laughs> and the way we work with it internally. All right, so yeah, this statement, if you are a, a CC or at least an XCC and you see this, you're like, oh boy, now we know what they're going to do. It's going to be, uh, yeah, it's, they're going to tighten up some stuff there for sure. They're going to make it so that you don't get to say a lot of things you want to say maybe with a little bit more <laughs> uh, control <laughs> over your opinions. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, 
We expect to have some sort of internal plan and first action points ready in the second half of September. Okay, then proceed with the changes during this autumn. Okay, fine. Future of the game. We'd like to offer you a deeper look into the future of our game. Oh, this is going to be a roadmap thing, right? Yeah, this is going to be a roadmap thing. Right now, we have dev vlogs where we basically announce everything that comes to super tests, waterline series, which is quarterly updates. To complement these and expand the horizon events, we want to sh uh, share a general roadmap with you. Yeah, this roadmap, which when it was suggested, was immediately shot down. <laughs> oh, man. And what you can expect to see in World of Warships in the far future. It'll give you an idea of what we want to focus on. But please keep in mind that things can and will change. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Yeah, no, things, of course, can change. We understand that. At the same time, we want to show the progress World of Warship achieves. The game evolves a lot each year, and it'll make it easier for you to follow what we are doing. Okay. Communications quality. There have been a lot of communication mistakes and incidents on our side recently. Uh, <laughs> wow, you mean one every few weeks? <laughs> and then later on, one every couple of days? Boy. Well, mistakes always happen and we are all human. Yes, we are all human. I acknowledge that. And mistakes are there, but yeah. Yeah, for a company, not really acceptable to have that many. We acknowledge that we need to improve this area. Okay, good. We've already launched a full internal review of all related processes. We want fewer mistakes and transition er and translation errors, more answers, and productive conversations. We want to improve the way you interact with us in any place, be it forums, customer support, Discord servers, or official streams. The streams where they ban people for asking questions. Hmm. Yeah. Somebody asked very generic questions about, you know, what was going on and everything, and those people got straight on bans. You know, when when your community managers come out and people say, "Hey, are you going to be able to discuss this?" and you wield a you know a ban hammer as your way, that's uh, <laughs> yeah, communications quality indeed. Hmm. Yes, under the thumb of the uh, the the ban hammer, right? Uh, general transparency. We need to work hard on it. On the one hand, we need to pay more attention to community sentiment. <laughs> On the other hand, we have to be more transparent and explain our positions. We'll create a series of publications to make our development processes more transparent and to show the logic behind what we do. We've been asking for something like this for years now, and we didn't get it. You know, there used to be this whole like, hey, if we send you guys some feedback and you don't act on it, we would like to at least hear why. And this is not a suggestion that's been made once. This has been made over multiple times over multiple years. <laughs> and that never got anywhere. Interesting, huh? For example, players do not understand why the latest torpedo bug took two updates to fix. While a CV bug, plane losses in 0.9.9, was fixed almost instantly. They are, in fact, very different. The CV bug was fixed by quickly adjusting some parameters, while the torpedo bug involved game logic. And even though it was technically fixed within a week, it had to go through all regular quality assurance processes. Deploying such change through a hotfix is extremely risky for the game. This should have been communicated transparently, and we'll do our best to do so in the future. Mm. In-depth communication and insights. When it is necessary, we'll use more specifics and we'll provide deeper explanations of our decisions. For example, we implemented the system for CVC, oh, so clan versus clan ship bans, which help keep the matter fresh. And we want to tell you more about how and why we use it, as it is something our hardcore players are interested in. The same hardcore players that Wargaming hasn't listened to at all for years. Hmm. Keep that in mind. All of it is just our current first plan. Okay, objectively, it is a solid first plan. Is it sufficiently good enough in all areas? No, but it is a good start. At least some of the key pain points, I guess, have been touched on. Uh, the details of how to fix those, not so much, right? Not not a lot of those details have come out yet. So realistically as players and you know of this game you want to keep an eye out on what is actually happening we will keep looking for other points of interest and challenges we want to show you our responsibility care and desire for the game by the way we communicate and through our actions to make the game better for everyone by the way this this sounds nice right this sounds nice just keep in mind this is the same company that 18 days ago two days after the initial exodus began contacted me one time with a message that basically said something along the lines of, oh, by the way, uh, we're really busy right now, um, but we do want to talk to you, and I'll definitely talk to you within this week. And then radio silence. Nothing. I haven't heard anything from them since. So keep that in mind about how much they uh, really want to talk to you and you know, really care and really want to communicate. Hmm. 
A final word on passion and communication. Oh, I know where this is going. I know. As soon as they bring up passion and communication, you know this is going to be a respect paragraph. You just know that's coming because that's what they used to say to us on the on the CC Discord too. Yes, we're really passionate and uh, communication, and we'd like to, you know. Okay, well, let's see if that's actually what it says. While we are working hard to improve the way we communicate and interact with you, we want to take a moment to address your passion and the way that we communicate with each other. Oh, this is definitely coming. We know that you care about the game a great deal and ask you to remember that there are people, community managers, support staff, developers, and volunteers that read your communications and post. Oh, this is definitely going there, wherever they may be. While we as a company certainly need to work on the way we communicate with you, we ask that you treat the people you interact with fairly and with respect. Oh, right there. <laughs> there it is. Your voice will carry as much or more weight with them if you present your feedback and opinions in a reasoned and constructive way. Yeah. All those years of offering feedback in reasoned and constructive ways and how much has been done. Very little. So, hmm, yeah. I mean, it's a statement. Uh, take what you want out of it. I'm going to take a much more sort of wait and see approach. See where they go with this at the end because... Um, yeah, I'm not too, too optimistic. Let's just put it that way. But hey, who knows? Maybe for the first time in all these years, Wargaming will surprise all of us, right? <laughs> oh, man, maybe I'm still maybe I'm still being a touch bit more optimistic. Anyhow, uh, that's pretty much it for me. Um, you know, I will keep an eye out for this. Um, don't expect too, too much, uh, you know, stuff directly related to World of Warships. I will definitely, you know, be making sort of naval oriented warships oriented type content although not much on the gameplay front maybe more historical documentary-esque things i was already trying to do a, a know your ship episode recently um unfortunately i have a housing situation to deal with and i'm basically now not going to be fully settled until the first of october so that episode might be a little bit delayed but i promise to get to it um but yeah i mean you know guys keep an eye out for wargaming and you know kind of <sighs> see what they will come up with at the end. Maybe it is something good for the first time in years, or maybe it's going to be the same old, same old, but it is going to be, you know, your guys' uh, responsibility to keep them honest by opening or closing that wallet. Anyways, take care, be well, and I'll talk to all of you again next time.